All right, number one. Number one, find the range of the relation. Negative two, three, negative one, three, negative one, five. Then determine whether the relation is a function. So here's your, if you've got a table, x, y, x, make sure you write this down if you don't know, x is the same thing as input, and y is the same thing as output. x is the same thing as domain, and y is the same thing as range. So in this particular problem, you got a negative 2 for an x, a 3 for a y, a negative 1 for an x, a 3 for a y, a negative 1 for an x, a 5 for a y. So your range is going to be anything in this column, which is a 3 and a 5. So the set of 3 and 5, and then the second half, is that a function? Yes or no? No. Why is it no? Because negative 1 is a 3, and the other one is a 5. Okay, right here is why you're in trouble comes from the negative one. You plug a negative one in, it spits out a three. So if you plug a negative one in again, it's got to spit out a three again. So if you plug the same input in later and it gives you a different output, that is not a function. Now, just look up here. Look at this. If I give you a picture, because this is going to be on the test. If you've got this graph right here and I ask you, what is the range of this graph? Jake, we shut that door, please? Sometimes it's easier to look on a picture. If you're looking at this graph on what is the range is asked, the range, Brody, is your Y's. That's the vertical. Okay, that's up and down. This graph goes forever in both directions. So what is the highest it gets to? Brody, what's the highest this graph gets to? What's the lowest it gets to? It goes from a negative infinity to a positive infinity. Let's look at domain. Domain. Okay, domain is X, so that's horizontal. That's left and right. Shayla, domain is left and right. So what is the farthest left that this graph goes? This graph right here. The farthest left, where does it go? Yeah, it goes all the way to negative infinity, and the farthest right is positive infinity. Okay, raise your boards. Number two. Number two. F of negative one. Take this negative one and plug it everywhere. There's an X. So you're going to have a negative one squared minus four. On the bottom, you should have a negative one plus two. So your numerator, a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1. Negative 1 plus 2. So you should have a negative 3 over 1. Number 3 is 2 for 2. Take the A, plug it in anywhere there's a T. So it's going to be a squared minus 2 times a minus 2. That's it. Number 4. That's the answer. Because you cannot, you can't combine any of these terms. You can't mix the a squared with the a. So you're done, done. Number 4. Which one's linear? To f. Ah, uh, linear. If you look at it, it's going to be straight, a straight line. Okay, a linear cannot have any of this. Cannot have exponents that are two or greater. Cannot be under a square root. Cannot be on the bottom of a fraction. And the last thing, you cannot multiply two letters together, x times y. So, j is gone. And G is gone. So it's down between H and F. Which one is it? H. Why is F wrong? Because there's no equal sign. It's not an equation. It's got an inequality. So it's an inequality. That's a trick one right there. 
So linear, if you're looking at them, you cannot have any of these things right here. Erase your boards. Number five. Write 3y equals negative 1 minus 5x in standard form. Yes, AX plus BY equals C. X and Y have got to be on the same side of the equation. They've got to be together. And put them alphabetically. Put X first. So if you've got 3Y equals a negative 1 minus 5X, you have got to get these X's to the other side. So they're with the Y's. So you plus 5X. Plus 5X. So you're going to have 5x plus 3y equals a negative 1. That matches up with a. Number 6. The x. If you're going to try and find the x-intercept, where are you going to plug 0? You're going to plug 0 for y. So you got a y and an x. If you're looking for the y-intercept, you're going to plug 0 in place of the x. So here we go. Take this 0, plug it in for y. What's 2 times 0? So you got this. You got 3x is 12. What's x? 3 times what's 12? So your x-intercept's got to be 4. Take the 0, plug it in for x. What's 3 times 0? So you got a negative 2y equals 12. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. y equals negative 6. So there's your intercepts. Your y-intercepts negative 6. Your x-intercepts is 4. Okay, at number 7. I slope. You're going to have to use this. y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So if we go 8 minus 6 divided by a negative 7 minus 2, you're going to get 2 over a negative 9. 